everyone welcome to today's video my name is ricky hayes it is a very special video i have a very special guest spencer cornelia he has his own youtube channel of over i believe now nearly sixty thousand subscribers so congratulations there he's been doing this for quite a long time you can check out his channel down below spencer we'll just start off with firstly though tell us a bit more about yourself and sort of what you do coming to you from las vegas we're yes. quite a bit of ways away on a map. I just crossed over 61,000 subscribers. Congratulations. And the growth has been almost all in nine months. And so wow. it's been pretty fast. It's been very humbling. I am a real estate investor, kind of a beginning uh, for the real estate community. You would consider me a beginner, even though I've done five or six deals at this point. But I've been doing YouTube on the side and it's kind of become my full-time job now that the virus has hit and I lost my job. And so this is basically what I do full time and it's it's taken off and it's allowed me to do it full time. And I'm, the I'm very video thankful. that really kicked you off from memory from looking at your YouTube channel was one around real estate where it was about an apartment complex. I believe that's the case. Was that right? You're, yep, you're correct. It was probably it'll be the most important video of my career. And I feel like if you're a young creator out there, I feel like everyone who's in what I call the YouTube basement. That is when you're stuck at 100 subscribers and it feels like no one's watching your stuff. Your mom's not even watching your stuff. Uh, what, what's really difficult is you need to believe in yourself. Even if you have the most confidence like I did, at some point when you've made 50 videos and none of them have gotten more than 20 views, you know, you, you start to lose, like maybe I'm not good enough. Yep. And for that video to take off, it hit 70,000 views. So it, it, it was released in July, June or July. And then three two or three months it had the same progression as all my other videos 20 30 views and then for whatever reason it took off oh, and watching it take off yeah with like 200 subscribers watching it take off to 70 to 100 thousand views in a month or two really kind of gave me that confidence that i i can do it well there's also a big difference i would say that like obviously you had that break but you capitalized on that as well you know you've been very consistent with in my opinion the high quality content i watch it every time as soon as you release the video i watch i love your channel i want everyone to know that like you should if you what why i love spencer the most as well is he also he doesn't just speak about real estate he speaks about the make money online niche um in various areas from e-commerce through to um just various webinars various make money affiliate marketing is a big one as well sorry i just remembered that so Spencer, what sort of got you really into speaking about the more make money online niche in a broad sense? It all started with real estate, actually. Okay. Around August, September of last year, 2019, I had noticed I wanted to start making videos about uh, at the time I was getting deeper into real estate and my knowledge of real estate investing. And there were these seminars that I just didn't like. And I'd meet people that went to these seminars and I'd hear stories of spending 40,000 and not getting anywhere. And so I started making videos on those. And it was just so happened right around that same time I watched CoffeeZilla's video on Fake Guru Friday about Dan Locke. And it was just the right time. I was the right person, the right place. I watched two or three of them and went, oh, this is interesting. And so I just wanted to do a deep dive. I had started to see the ads of these gurus. There were just, it felt like there was more and more gurus making so much money. And every ad was about this car and that car and that amount of money and this business opportunity. And all I wanted to do was see for myself what kind of success have they had? And so I was like, this might make an interesting video. I'll just do a bunch of research and just kind of talk about what I found. And I think it, strategically it worked out perfectly that Dan Locke happened to be the first subject of what is the Authentic or Charlatan series, which is kind of really what took my channel to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see you're very passionate about it. I personally am too. And that's why like, I, I, I love your content. You're just, we're just um, talking before the recording about um, how much time it takes you to uh, produce one of these videos. Most of your videos are around, from what I see, 10 to 15 minutes in length, very bite sizable um, videos. Um, explain to you how long it takes you to sort of research and produce one of these videos. I've gotten comfortable with watching YouTube videos at 2 to 2.5x. <laughs> and so I'm totally comfortable watching <laughs> like 10 to 15 hours, maybe. I, I don't know. It's really hard to put a timestamp on it because I don't, I'm not very good about sitting down and going for four or five hours straight. I think what, what helps my research process is actually maybe doing for an hour and two, hour or two, and then taking 30 minutes off and watching some humor videos on YouTube. So it, it kind of gives my brain a chance to relax yeah, for a minute. So it's hard to put an hour, but I, I spend the full three days. This is all I do. So yeah. I wake up, I've actually got back into polyphasic sleep. Are you familiar with that? Uh, I'm not. No. Okay, so quick 30 second rundown. Polyphasic sleep basically means multiple phases of sleep a day. 
And so I'll wake up at about four and a half hours of sleep in the, in the night. I'll get up and start watching videos in the morning and then I'll nap at some point in the morning and then I might nap in the afternoon. Because so what, it, you sort of get a bit of an adrenaline rush when you wake up, you have the energy and then you go back to sleep and you repeat that cycle? A little bit, yeah. Okay. So I wake up naturally to go to the bathroom and then I just, I'm up, so yep. I just stay up. Uh, yep. But the, the premise is basically you get sleep throughout the day and so you get well rested, get some REM sleep and then it gives you another four hours of energy. So anyway, so I'm able to spend a solid three days. The editing I've gotten pretty good at there's some videos that are more challenging than others where I, I feel like it needs more editing. I have found recently that the more editing I can do in a video where it's just more images, more videos, I try to add, I mean, there's certainly like a gamification of this where you're like always trying to add some like catchy stuff to the video to keep the viewer's attention. And so that takes a lot of time. The editing process is probably six hours. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, because then, it's, as you know, you're you're a YouTuber. You, you got to do the thumbnail. Some thumbnails, it's like I don't do any I don't of like this. Oh. <laughs> I, um, I uh, yeah. I'm very fortunate. I have a very talented video editor that I just perfect outsource that to her. Um, I'm I'm too much uh, a bit of a gamer nerd. So I, I I that's what I mean. Like I personally have deep respect for people that do video editing. I have no patience for it. Um, I'm a marketer. It would not love, be your thing then. No, I love marketing and like formulating the, the the script behind a video but i hate producing it um and you've probably seen that spence from just having a look in my channel that uh my videos are definitely not high production for you <laughs> you're well what you figured out you've figured out youtube um in the sense that there's some people that just make videos because they want to be famous or they see people like me making nine grand a month and go oh man i can do that right and so they ha they don't have like a super targeted idea of you know they i'm going to the store today and they vlog it but what you've done is the smart way, which is I'm good at this one thing. There may only be 20,000 people in this niche and get 1200 views a video, but I'm pretty sure you you have a pretty good funnel, don't you? Like your YouTube funnels you funnels into coaching and consulting. So you're, yeah, I, I, you've got I a Titan been, button. I haven't been doing that much recently just because I've been focused on my other businesses, truthfully. Um, I still enjoy doing it, but yeah, and that's right. Like I am um, personally, I I could make very beginner content like as you say like with a lot of the make money on these they they literally just target beginners are beginners they get rich quick and I'm not but I, I personally don't agree with it to me you know that's why I love your channel and your personality is is that as you know making a business no matter what form it is is always difficult it has uh, ups more downs than ups I find many of the time myself um, and I sort of want to touch on that actually a bit, um, you know, because you are a very trusted person and I want my audience to know, um, you know, understand the difficulties of, of building a business. And we're going to relate this more to e-commerce as a whole. Um, so with the the people that you've spoken about with e-commerce, the, the, the gurus in this space, and hopefully I'm not a fake guru, I hope so, um, that what, what's your sort of stance and what would be your advice to people about e-commerce, about following these people and taking their advice is that a bit of a anything you do in life is hard man i've yep. i've recently I, i'm not religious at all or spiritual i have come across buddhism and it's all about like life is suffering and it's what i've i've been struggling recently financially and so i've i've been tying into that where it's just life is a struggle you just deal with it and hopefully you figured out a way to add some type of rose at the end of the of the path, right? Whether that's a little bit of money at the end of the month for you or you live in a nice house, whatever it is. Yep. So with the, what we're seeing right now with the gurus, e-commerce specifically, it applies all, all over the all across the board. They want to make it sound easy because that's what sells. And so they don't tell you the truth. They don't tell you that getting in drop shipping or e-commerce or affiliate marketing takes time. You're not going to be good from the start. I could teach affiliate marketing. I've never done it. I could teach the basics. It's not that complicated. No, but what not. makes it really challenging is constantly doing it. After three months when you haven't made a dollar, can you stick with it for the fourth month? Those are the kids that will succeed. But what's unfortunate is a lot of these gurus have turned to the course selling as their main income, which is not a problem. That inherently is not a problem. It becomes a problem when you didn't have much success in whatever it is you're selling. And then you become a course seller because the course selling is the low hanging fruit and there's not that much risk. Yeah. And so they, and that, that becomes, they're just a course seller. The margins are so large because they charge a yeah. thousand, two thousand dollars, get a four or five hundred dollar sale and it's, it's easily scalable across the world because you don't, it's just an info product. Well, and it's really easy to sell because there's certain, there's certain angles in the online 
marketing niche. Uh, if you want to get laid, want to get paid, want to get healthy, <laughs> any any of those, any of those are going to be easy because it's so easy to, to manipulate people. You aren't going to sell, hey, do you want a new uh, a new kitchen set, right? Is your is your kitchen set old? Do you want a new one? Like, there's you can't really prey on people's emotions for that. But if you're not getting, you're not dating the woman you want to date. You know, I've got I've got the solution for you. It's, you can just prey on people's emotions really easily. Yeah, I really don't like the whole um, the dating scene. One, it, it, to me personally, uh, the way I interpret it is it really objectifies women. I personally just don't agree with that at all. Um, I, I think it's really quite disgusting, in my opinion. But um, back to the e-commerce. Sorry, I was just going to say. So, and this would apply to all industries. But like, what? What would you say for people to look out for to define them as someone that would be a fake guru as opposed to someone that's more trustworthy uh, from your experience and, and research? What I look for first is what is their past experience with running the actual business that they're selling? Because in the past, people wrote books that had 20 years of experience. Like they were, they became gurus, but they were totally legitimate. What's yep. been troubling is now with the scalability of the internet, you now have, there's a very low barrier for people to go, oh, I, I can actually take a course from that guy over there, basically repackage it. Some people even hire off Fiverr or Upwork for those people to make the course for them. And then they just <laughs> sell the course. It becomes too easy is basically what I'm getting at. So what I look for first is, does this person have very tangible proof? And I'm trying to figure out why are, why are they course selling? What is the reason for it? And it, to me, it becomes reasonably simple. Um, to, to analyze that part of a guru, which uh, unfortunately the guru word has kind of taken on a negative connotation, which it shouldn't. Yeah. There's just a lot of them. And really, honestly, there's plenty of good gurus out there. There's, there's very few bad gurus. They just happen to be making a lot of noise. Yeah. And so I think thing, first, are they, if, if they're pitching an e-commerce course, do they have very tangible proof? Have, do they have years of it? Or were they a flash in the pan? You know, in the last six months, did they make a lot of money? And then they switched to course selling. That's probably a sign that they got lucky. You know, do they have years of it? Have they coached others? What kind of respect do they get in the community? See, this might be different per niche, of course, but personally for me, uh, because a number of people ask me this too, when I look at for e-commerce, um, what channels, for instance, to look forward to? Because you know, everyone, the, the most of the gurus, so to speak, they um, it's mostly YouTube ads, isn't it? Like it's always YouTube is the go-to point for people trying to make money online. So they run YouTube ads. It's just the, the entry point. Um, for me, I look at personally. This isn't always the, the case, but personally, I find that smaller channels are um, more quality in e-commerce. Just from my experience, I'm not just saying that because I'm a smaller channel, but like. Um, because their content teams seems to be more um, ad advanced, you know, not just like sitting in front of a camera talking theory about how easy it is to make money with a Lambo in the background or at the beach or something. They're, I also look for um, very much, and it's my strong recommendation to look for channels that actually teach you how to do something step by step, not just like say how to do it, because anyone can say that. Um, actually show it so like is that sort of things that you look for a bit as well like when you sort of define that too to actually show yeah, the, the skills yeah the subscriber count is a good one i don't i don't know if there's correlation or causation there but between this low sub count but you do find that there's a lot of there's a lot of amazing real business ceos guys that are worth 10 million dollars and they have videos like interviews on on youtube with no views yeah and it's like this guy's totally legit he what he's saying is brilliant but no yeah. views, no one's watching them. Yeah, well, see, that's, I might be wrong, but again, as I said, like just from my experience in e-commerce, like I find the big, big, big channels very touch on topics on a very basic sense because they're targeting a very young male demographic because that's mainly what the entrepreneur niche is. Whereas like, for instance, mine, because my content is not engaging and, and many people tell me it's quite advanced, most of my audience are 25 and up year old males as an example. And um, you said it absolutely right, like these, uh, entrepreneurs that actually have well-established companies that do tens of millions to far beyond that um, don't get much interest because they're, they're talking terms and ways that people don't understand and they're not interested in. Um, well, and it's not a flashy thumbnail and title yeah. as well. <laughs> Clickbait. Yeah. You know, it's a guy sitting down and talking for an hour. A lot of people are you... on YouTube to watch eight minute videos. Would you still trust someone if like, like, as I said, like it, to me, it's so copy paste. Like I could do this. It's not hard. Like with running a script with um, the beach, the Lamborghini, the women, the mansions, 
if you if you see all of that would you say that that's just a sign of red flags to potentially start you know don't take this person like that they're the the, the best thing since sliced bread it would is that what yeah. you would sort of say i'll give you a roundabout answer and hopefully it answers it yep i the purpose of the course oh, excuse me the purpose of my video series the goal is to be like a personal trainer i don't my goal isn't to look at every single guru and go here's the answer is this guy real or fake it's i if you if you, hopefully people are picked up by now maybe not but most of my episodes the goal is to talk about something different that is common amongst gurus and so one video i highlight webinars using someone as an example another i highlight sales funnels another i highlight kevin david copying content so i try to do it i try to kind of teach and so my goal is through the series over time people will gain the knowledge that I have or the ability to analyze gurus that I have. And I'm not positioning myself as some expert, but I will say that when I look at gurus, I can spot stuff immediately. And I just, I understand how the world works, even though I'm very young. It's like everything takes is hard work. It's, it's just, there's going to be a lot of crap that you have to deal with. Running a business is all about problems. It's all about difficulties. Your life just has a way of punching you in the face and it's going to knock out the people who don't want it bad enough. And at some point, you're, you hopefully succeed if you stick at it long enough. So when I see any any of these means, so to, to come back to your point of, to uh, the come back to your point of the cars or the women, yep, yep, yep. to me, I, I don't say that's necessarily a red flag immediately, but it's a sign that they're trying to, they're trying Hide to move something. your attention over to that yep. as opposed to the product itself. That's what I always say too. Like you know, there's again, like in any space. It's a sad thing that all the legitimate people are very much foreshadowed by the, and usually that's very correlated because they're running ads. So of course they're going to get the most exposure. Um, and I definitely agree with that point um, that you've sort of said there too. So thank you very much for that. That was um, fantastic explanation. You put a lot of effort into sort of teaching this and, and it's, um, you know, it's fantastic. People like yourself and CoffeeZilla uh, are growing so rapidly that and because you guys put so much effort into it, it is educating people more. And I feel that a lot of people have, there's a, been a big community of people that have already very much disagreed with this, but now because of the work of people like yourself and CoffeeZilla and so on, that people now have uh, are vocalizing that more. And I feel that that's going to have a bit of a shift in the overarching community of, of the various niches. What are your sort of thoughts on that in the foreseeable future, let's say six, 12, 24 months time? I'm glad you recognize that. One thing I've, I try to do with my content is I've noticed, number one, the attention I can get, right? I kind of understand the game. I could do a flashy thumbnail and come out and call people scammers. That's sexy. <laughs> but the goal of my videos, and recently especially, I've, I've been trying to shift a little bit away from targeting exact gurus, but more of kind of more broad topics. But one thing I want to do, I always want an educational element in my videos. And if you do happen to, uh, those of you watching happen to come across my videos recently, you'll notice that I'll use some type of topic. The video that was released yesterday was about quitting your nine to five and why the gurus are all about, you know, quit your nine to five, but then I tie it into hedonic adaptation. I try to have an educational element. I almost want to bait you in to a the first two minutes is about one topic you thought you were talking about. And then I tie it into a very educational moment. So I kind of use the guru as anyway. All right, I'm getting on a rant. So to answer no, no, your question. No, I love it. I absolutely yeah. love this. Because I watched that video on the nine to five and I found I was personally in the same position. Now, I don't know if you know my personal backstory, but like mine was that it took me a year before I could quit my nine to five. And even then I was so anxious and stressed. I'm so lucky that my wife was so supportive. I remember my parents said I should never leave my nine to five because my parents are very uh, accustomed and fashioned to that lifestyle. And uh, so for me, it was a big risk. And it was even a big risk considering the fact that I had a very low expen expense life. Like, you know, I didn't have a mortgage. I didn't, my expenses were very low. And even then, like the risk for me personally, um, I thought was very high because you said it in your video yourself, it goes from being a hobby or side hustle to being your, your income. And all of a sudden you're a lot more emotionally invested. Your decisions can become more irrational. I look back for me and I think that I was quite irrational. I was, um, I made a lot of mistakes. I've been very fortunate to have persevered. Um, but what do you say, like, I want to touch on that. Like, what do you say to people that there's this whole culture of, oh, nah, stick it to the man, quit your, quit your job. A lot of my friends, some of my best friends, they work full-time jobs and they love it, you know, or they don't particularly love it, but it pays their bills and they get to live their life and they're happy. And at the end of the day, to me, 
that's a win. You know, like um, there's a big culture in the entrepreneur space that, that stick it to the man, be your own boss, nine to five. What do you sort of say about that? By the way, I forgot to answer your question about gurus in the next six, 12, 24 months. That's going to oh, be a yeah, long sorry. answer. So, so let's, let's make sure to touch on that in a minute. Okay. So yep. one thing that we've been seeing and what's weird in the make money online space is all of these, I hate using the word entrepreneur because to me, they're not entrepreneurs. To me, an entrepreneur owners, is aren't they? Elon Musk. Yeah. To me, I differentiate business owner yep, from entrepreneur. I agree. But anyway, um, they, they, they're financially incentivized by trying to change your perception of your job. And it can be easy if you if you're really good with psychology and selling and marketing you can keep hammering home points look at look at what i have over here look at all this money on my shelf don't you want it you need to quit your job because i used to be like you and i quit my job and so they're financially incentivized to get you to start going you know what i am more and it's it's very vague it's like i am more i am worth more I, yeah i want to be my own boss and uh, they're doing that to get you to leave your job to buy their business opportunity. But what's weird is in that a lot of industries, the idea of quitting your nine to five to do some online business opportunity is bizarre. In real estate, it is very common. Everyone says to keep your nine to five. It's very common. No, go get a nine to five. Use all your extra income to buy real estate. Don't leave your nine to five. It's it, it's actually the opposite. And so right now we're, we're in a, a period of time where we're getting hammered with these ads to leave the nine to five, but it's only really this industry that's that's preaching this. I find e-commerce especially is um, very, very prominent on that leave your nine to five. And especially like you touch on a number of videos. Um, I don't personally do it. Um, the Amazon automation, I've never believed in it. And um, I do the Shopify e-commerce and I prefer that. Um, uh, as well. Now I wanted to, I'll get to that a bit more in a second because I was getting in a tangent. Back to you, what you said before. So what do you see the industry as in six, 12, 24 months uh, from a YouTube um, ecosystem perspective? It's very clear that people want this type of content, that people are upset. The the growth, CoffeeZilla is probably a little better example because his content happens to be probably a little more targeted, whereas mine can kind of get a little broader. So it's hard to say how many people follow me strictly for the fake guru stuff. But it's very clear. I mean, given our channel's growth, Tom Nash has been growing. He's a buddy of mine. He's up to over 20,000 subs now. He does something similar. And uh, it's clear that the market wants it. So given the rapid uh, subscriber count increase of this kind of space of calling out these fake gurus, it's clear that there are a lot of people that want it. And I think it's going to continue to grow. And I'm fascinated to see. I don't know the future. I also think there's been snake oil salesmen for decades, hundreds of years. So it, it will continue. There will be it'll shift. But I do think, and, and the reason why I, my goal with my channel is to bring awareness. My, I never do it with tenac tenacity towards people. I never want to kill people's businesses, even if I can't stand them. My goal is to simply bring awareness because I think an aware consumer will kill this industry because all these people rely on people buying their products. And if they are aware of the tactics used to sell them, then in my opinion, I don't see these per, uh, products being purchased. And that, that is what ki would kill the industry. They'd be forced to change their methods. To me, the reason why I focus so little on courses is it's very little about the course. To me, it's all about the marketing and the advertising used yeah. on the consumers. The course is just the end point. It's, as you right. said yourself, like um, as a marketer myself, I know if I really wanted, it's not that hard to get course sales because as you said like my wife actually funnily enough is a psychologist herself um and so and we both know that where this is all really stemmed from is the click funnels like and don't get me wrong russell brunson and that have done exceptional job that they've built the perfect webinar they like these are all tools they can pretty much you can just pay them they'll give you those tools and you customize it to your needs and there you go you can start selling courses um, and they've done an extremely good job of marketing that and building a community. As a result, we've started to see this uprising because, you know, like you said it yourself, like with um, uh, Kevin David, you know, like I don't even know how much he's made in his core sales, but it's absolutely uh, insane. And I did find thing, a video he did with Graham Stephan. I think he sold three three million in 2018, maybe. Wow. It was like the, yeah, in core sales. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's more now. And you add the Amazon automation. Well, I was about to touch on that. Like, um, in my personal opinion, like what you, um, and I'll rephrase these as well, um, that no business can ever be fully automated. It's just, it's just not possible and it's not smart. Um, you should always have a hand in your business. All the businesses I work um, in and, and help and so on, you always got to have a hands on because 
you can't just expect something to just work itself and it just make you a lot of money. It's just, life isn't that simple. Which I want people to know, because uh, the Amazon automation seems to be a very trending thing right now. What's your thoughts on the Amazon automation related uh, core selling and niche? It's the next boom. It's the next gold rush. And that's yep. what I started, why I started the video with it. We've seen this and that all these gurus, they just, uh, they're like water. They'll flow to the next opportunity. That's why if you, if you see, now this is not, does not mean you're a fake guru, but if you see a lot of these guys, they're a, uh, an expert in A and B and C and D. Every year there's a new product in a new industry. You know, there's, it, it, how, how much time did you spend in each one? And, and so Amazon automation is the next one. And the thing I, I want to look at is with these gurus is, especially Amazon automation, is what is the incentives for you offering this service? Let's say it's 100% true. It's 100% as they pitch it. You put in 10,000 or 20,000 to the automation expert, and then they get this Amazon business up, up and running for you and you're making 100% yearly returns. <laughs> I immediately go, okay, that could be possible, but why is it that this is offered? Yeah, if you, exactly. In real estate, this kind of service is offered, but the end user is paying for the offset of risk with lower returns. That's just how the world works. If, yeah. if the returns were double, the person offering the service would just simply do whatever it takes to keep those returns themselves, which yeah. given all of these systems, that is the case. There is a, the ability for the offerer of this service to take more returns. So when I'm looking at this and going, okay, maybe one or two people have had a ridiculous store, a, a one that produced 100% return. But how in the world could this be possible? It, it's a very simple analysis of humans, right? We're incentive driven. Any human behavior is driven by incentives. So when I look at someone, I say, what is your incentive for offering a course that could possibly make $20,000 a year? Why would you offer it for 20,000? Why would you not offer it for 100,000? That would be very fair for both parties. A 20% return is insane. Mm. So if you could guarantee a 20% return, I know every investor in real estate would, would take that. Yeah. And obviously you would as well, because you get, you get a fair deal. Yeah, I mean, like, that, that's the thing. Um, one of the things I always tell people um, that I see very much in the e-commerce space, especially, is people say that they're getting 40, 50% margins. And I just say, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, because I don't, I don't personally follow, as I said, many people in this space. I do um, investing in the share market. So for decade, over a decade, I've been off. And these are multi-billion dollar companies, you know, startups. They spend billions. They couldn't care less about us on YouTube. You know, that they're making billion dollar deals. And they're all very happy and their investors are very happy. If they're getting like a 25, 30% margin to them, that's absolutely insane. And these are the biggest companies in the world. And I keep trying to say this to people that, you know, a 20 to 30% margin is a very, very healthy margin in a business. And um, a lot of these people are preaching outlandish margins in their business. And um, I think it's, I don't know, to me, I think it's very, very misleading. And it's very- Well, the misguided. biggest issue is we have no police force. You can't exactly. do this in real estate. You literally cannot do, you cannot promise 20 to 30% and not deliver that you'll, you're gonna get in trouble. Your business is gonna get shut down. So what do you, that's what I've been uh, a bit annoyed with myself is the, the, the internet space has opened it up to anyone being able to do this. And as you said, there's no internet police. I mean, there's YouTube, but it's not really policed. What do you foresee that's gonna happen over the next six, 12, 24 months in relation to that like, um, as well? Do you think that there's going to be more mandation on how these ads are created as well? Not at all, there's not enough manpower. And in yep. whose decision is it? And that's the tricky yep. thing. Dan Locke, I think is the biggest scam in the internet marketing space from what I've researched. But we're talking about a guy that might bring in 8 million a year, which to, I don't know, to me, that's, that's a lot of money. It's a, that's an impressive on an business. individual it, basis. It is yeah. individual. Yeah. I mean, $8 million a year, but I did a video when I started watching uh, a research for the online dating industry for a video I made, we're talking about people that run $70 million scams. And then coffeezilla did a video where it's a billion dollar scam. That's where all the resources go. So, um, you have YouTube employees, Who's to say that they can allow ads run by Kevin David or not? Because mm. what they're doing isn't really scamming by the nature of it. They're not frauds. Yeah. By us, it's like that. We, we think they're at the gray area a little past it. They think they're on the gray area on the other side, like up toe in the line. So mm. whose decision is that to make? And is it fair to give one person that kind of power? Well, and that's true as well. If you look at it from uh, like, you know, let's say YouTube's perspective or uh, the government's perspective, 
they're not going to try and aim for the small fish that are making a couple hundred thousand a year. As you said, they're going to aim for the people that are making a billion because that affects the most people. They use like a bit of a priority matrix, don't they, so to speak. And it makes sense because you only have a certain amount of resource. It's not unlimited. And that's the thing that's interesting with marketing. It's a very gray area. And as you said, it sort of depends on where you perceive that you sit. Um, And that's why like I love people like yourself that are just bringing that awareness, not to condemn people so to speak but more just to educate on what's some red flags for potentially for you to look for as i said for me if i were to say if i see someone talking in a sports car always at the beach you can work two hours a day you outsource yeah. everything and make yeah. five million dollars a year I still business tell is people, easy i still tell people i've been doing this for three years i still tell people i work at least 15 hours a day now personally because i just love to work um and I love to learn. Like the, the thing that I love the most about business is not necessarily the money it brings. It's like how much I learn. Before this, um, I was in IT, so that was my profession. And so being in the online space, that made sense, but I had no idea how to market and stuff. And it's so fascinating, um, the, the whole marketing perspective. Well, you've now, you've now won the money game, right? I've seen your, your figures, right? We're talking, you make a million a year? Yeah, plus, yeah. Yeah, more, oh, not, more than not profit. That's revenue. Sure, sure. But like, at some point, you make enough where if people, if someone's not making any money, they go, "Wow, why are you still, you know, why are you still doing this?" Well, at some point, you just go, "I love the game. Like, I, I love real, like real estate. I'm gonna make so much money in it long term. Yep. But I'm in it for the game. I don't care about the profit. I want to win." I um, I've I've always been very fascinated by real estate. Again, I would say that if you're saying that you're a beginner, I'd be complete beginner. Um. What would you say? Because there's a lot of people that are quite interested in real estate too. What would you like? The, the, the biggest problem I've seen with real estate is not that it's uh, a fantastic niche. It's very capital intensive in the very short to medium term. Um, what would you say to people that are looking to get into real estate just as a guess, um, as a round part figure? Like what, would, what should they be doing to start off with? The first year or two, networking and listening to every podcast possible. Real estate is a very long-term game. This is not a get rich quick. This is not your life. Now it certainly can happen. If you get around a rock star, you can, I've, I've had friends go from within 24 months, we're talking zero to a million dollar net worth. It can happen. It absolutely can if you know what you're doing, but it is very challenging. And there is also a lot of risk that you cannot see. Starting an e-commerce store, you put in 4,000 of inventory, nothing sells, you lose $4,000. Real estate, if you take on a property and the sewage goes out, or the, here, here's what's going on in my life right now. I have a house right now where I was putting about 35,000 renovations into it. This is all the money I have. And I was gonna upgrade it, get a little nicer uh, house for myself, increase the value. Well, I had a little plumbing problem and it turned out it was a big sewage problem and to fix the whole thing was gonna cost about $28,000. Just for the sewage? just for the sewage yeah i mean we're talking they're going my whole my whole downstairs is destroyed my bath i have two bathrooms destroyed oh, right sorry now to hear that. we're talking down down in down through the concrete they were here jackhammering all week last wow. week my wow. kitchen's destroyed my outside I, I laid concrete recently they had to go down my concrete out front six feet deep to get to the sewage lines and so we're talking twenty eight thousand dollars well if you don't have it uh, you, you kind of need it <laughs> to yeah. fix up your house so that your the roommates that are paying my rent yeah. or they're paying the rent are can live right so that's the risk uh, same thing with flipping houses so for me what I recommend to everyone is to go out meet people locally meet people in your market doing deals because every market's different investing in San Francisco is different than Kansas City Missouri which you're not USA. Just imagine expensive. No, I don't know what it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the strategies are different. And when you learn from people in person, you can get away from the gurus. You can get away from all the people saying it's easy. You also have what, what happens in real estate. This is possible everywhere else, but you have uh, survivorship bias and real estate ha- gives people the opportunity to succeed very quickly and to a level that's very impressive. And so the people on YouTube are generally a bias of the people that hit the home runs four in a row and succeeded, they're the top 1%. So if you're only consuming from the people who some of them might've got a little lucky or they're just they're just the all-stars, they're just yeah. the outlier all-stars, yep. but you're not seeing the, the guys in the 40 to 60% range that are more like you because they're just not on YouTube because they didn't really succeed or have the million dollar net worth. Yeah. 
yeah that makes perfect sense. that's the the i love how you said that with the outliers um i was just thinking about this i went for a walk yesterday and like people um they focus on these like in my opinion how i describe it, the one in a million case where like yep whatever it might be they're lucky they're at the right space the right time just many whatever. factors went their way yeah that's exactly. the best way to put it a few and things went people, their way and it worked out and then all of a sudden it becomes this gold rush and uh, e-commerce as a whole like whether it's amazon um automation or just shopify build drop shipping and that has been obviously booming because of the pandemic um and to me i immediately saw this is that we're going to see a big shift in that to me the government's going to and we're starting to see it um enforce more policy and mandation because as soon as again something becomes big the government steps in to make sure that people aren't being scammed lied to so on and so forth um what do you what, what's sort of your thoughts just on the e-commerce industry like if, if someone wanted to start an e-commerce business um, one of the things I want, always wanted to ask is, let's say someone had a thousand dollar course opportunity to buy that a thousand dollars. They had the choice between spending the thousand dollars themselves and failing 50 times, let's say as an example, and they lose it, or they buy a course that turns out to be, to be crap. What would be your recommendation just from your perspective on what you well, would do? I'm going to give them your email. That's what I do. I say <laughs> contact Ricky. <laughs> Ricky oh, knows better than I. No, I, I don't. I don't give advice. I don't like giving general advice. I, I do know that my philosophy on life is certainly different than okay, others, okay. and so I, I'll speak on my philosophy, and that is, I'm in Vegas, so it's very appropriate. I'm all about gambling on yourself. I love the idea of every year, if you're able to save a thousand dollars, just gamble on yourself, man. Go lose all the money. Find out that you can lose it and bounce back. I've yep. lost money numerous times now. It's it doesn't affect me. I think that's the better way. You could probably speak from experience too. When you yeah. just go out and lose a little money, you're just like, okay, I can bounce back. I learned a, a something or two. And at some point it's gonna work out for you if you keep the at way, it. The way I always look at life personally is that money always comes and goes. Money always comes and goes, but knowledge lasts a lifetime. And I, I'll always recommend it to people that like if I was just using that, and I'm sorry if I put you in an awkward position, by the way, there. Oh, uh, but personally, if I were to say between, let's say, the course and spending, I would always say go and spend it yourself because by the end of that thousand dollars, even if you've lost it all, I guarantee you will have learned so much. And then if you have that next thousand dollars a second time, you'll find it 50 times easier. It's sort of how I generally look at it. That's how I've always approached business is like I approach it that the first time around, I'm going to go out with my best intentions and I know I'm going to fail. Okay, whatever it might be, I'm gonna fail, what, whatever that definition is. And then the second time I'll learn from that failing, I'll do it better and I'll still fail and so on and so forth. Like what you said with your YouTube channel, really that I'm not trying to say fail, but like, you know, more or less that it takes that long time and then all of a sudden things start just clicking into place. And it, to me, the, the biggest thing in business that people don't like to admit is time and consistency to me is uh, the most important thing in business, you know, give things time to mature yourself included and just do it consistently. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you find you just get better and better and better at it. And that's sort of how I uh, personally attribute my success because I'm a very stubborn minded person that I, I hate to fail. <laughs> I hate to, um, and, but I always acknowledge it all the same. And because uh, I watch a lot of these big businessmen and that, and they say like for the like, people don't realize they look at Jeff Bezos and for, you know, the richest man in the world but for decades he he was nearly broke like he was failing and stuff and and then things just started to click into place people generally look at the end result rather than the journey to that result just from my Absolutely. perspective and one thing with knowledge is you have to break it down further i think firsthand experience is is what you're really referring to there's nothing that can yeah, replace sorry, that's for, when you actually when you actually lose money and that's the value of skin in the game when you go out and you lose money you're going to do whatever it takes to not lose it again and you'll find that you kind of you kind of change paths naturally you go i went down this path last time i don't want to lose money again so i'm going to try something a little different but it took you losing money the first time to try the second path i watched your video on that actually about the um the skin in the game regarding the real estate i've forgotten the man's or the yeah the, clayton the, morris morris yeah, that, Invest. Yeah, where you know you explain it very well that they had no skin in the game and that's very true you know like um you should always have some form of that you can lose something because if you've got everything to gain nothing to lose like you're not 
it, it's it's an unfavorable situation, isn't it? Yeah. Now I want to talk about a principle just a second ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I talked about in my video Nassim Taleb. This is where I received this Nassim, valuable that... information from yep. Nassim Taleb, the author. And basically, the way I view business, and I always did this naturally. Now, now that I have the principle in mind, I can apply it uh, backwards. But for me, success in whatever I was going to do, whether it was YouTube, real estate it has what's called asymmetric outcome, long tail asymmetric outcome. And that is essentially, you, you're gonna take L's short term. So you might go, let's just using that example, let's say it costs you $1,000 for five years straight. You, you save up a thousand and you spend the thousand at the end of the year and you lose money five years straight. But if I told you sometime in the next seven years, you're gonna win and the win is gonna bring you $50,000 so you could either lose, the worst case scenario, you lose a thousand six years straight, and on the seventh year, you, you gain 50,000. Well, that's asymmetric. It is, a, it, is a, it is not a symmetrical outcome. You lose a little bit to gain a lot. And to me, that's how I always viewed YouTube. I just wanted to keep going because I knew that I could take L's for years. I could take people looking at me and going, why are you doing video? You have 100 subscribers. I, I certainly had friends that probably looked at me. My family members didn't believe in me. They didn't know what I was doing, but now they do. <laughs> now they yeah. do. I was about to now, say that, like, because naturally, like, you know, people always naturally go to doubt you uh, when, it, when it goes against the, the, the normal curve of society expectations. And that is one of the tough things with just like what you've just said. Um, so, what ha what would be you would say is the biggest shift from when you were let's say at 100 subscribers to now obviously over 60,000 from the people in your personal life their perspective of you and what you're doing there's an inherent level of oh that's cool there's an inherent <laughs> level of value that you can provide when they meet you and they find out because really right now what arguably the most valuable kind of conversational piece is I have a following on some social media and following is subjective. To some people, 5,000 is following. To some people, it needs to be 500,000 to elicit that response. But I can tell you, I mean, 60,000 now, there's a lot of people that go, oh man, that's a lot. And so there is, it's, 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 story, it's uh, worth the story. It's worth the conversation. And so I, I get that um, a little bit. I live in a place in Australia called Bendigo, which is a regional, regional city in Victoria. And so we've got 110,000 people. And I look at that when you say 60,000, I think if I were to get everyone in Bendigo, half of the people and put them in one spot, those are all the people that follow you. So to me like <laughs> that, that that's, um, you know, something to genuinely be proud of. And like, I, I, I've, it took me a while, but like, you know, I've got, what is it? 17,000 subscribers or whatever. And compared to the people out there, let's say like Dan Locke and that, that have millions of subscribers. Yeah, it is small, but when you put it in retrospect, if you put people, let's say on a football oval, uh, you guys would call it gridiron. Sorry. So our football is different to yours. Anyway, right. That, it's a lot of people and it is, um, you know, well, and, and what's crazy about YouTube is there's, there's probably 50 channels that I'm aware of that I'm not subscribed to that. Like I've seen multiple videos from that person. And so when I say 60,000 subscribers, that might mean that 150,000, if, if they hear my name, they go, oh yeah, that's the guy who does the fake guru stuff. There's some type of uh, recognition. So really it's, you have a certain amount of subscribers, but with YouTube, you might, I don't know what the ratio is. You could double or triple the amount of people who are kind of in that sphere of interest where yeah. they've watched a video or two and they might catch another one in the future. So one thing I wanted to ask you as well is obviously because you've done all this research and you've learned a lot about various niches, you've sort of implied it yourself um, over time um, that you would be interested yourself at some regard doing a course yourself. Because like, I know I see your muscles, mate, you know, you do the workouts and stuff. I used to too, but uh, being at home all the time, I've just lost motivation. <laughs> um, so uh, like, uh, and you've said it yourself and I agree, there's um, plenty of great courses out there like anything courses as a whole the idea of it's fantastic it's more who presents it that's the problem yes um, with yourself like are you planning to to do a course in that yourself in a specific area like more real estate i assume for you possibly it depends on how successful i am yep. because for me i would only do a course if i could do it in such a way to have a hundred percent success rate so for me, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the release the course. And by the way, I totally fantasize about releasing a course and making a hundred grand a month. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm just as greedy as the, that. Yeah. As the fake gurus don't, <laughs> you know, let's not get it twisted. But at the same time, I'm not a big fan of just releasing a course to the open public, running a bunch of ads and trying to send out the fishnet to everyone and bring them in. 
So to me, I would want to do it in such a way that I could guarantee success. I would want to have the best product on the market, 100% success rate, even if that means filtering everyone to the point where only three people enter a month, you know. But then I have to ask myself, is that worth my time? Because my goal, my interest is running a real estate business, not a course business. I want to run a yep. real estate business. Like I want to have a legitimate, I'm running three or four rehab crews at every time. I'm buying four or five houses a month, which is entirely possible within two or three years from now. I want to be doing that. That's what, and, and if I'm doing that, if I'm making 50 to 100 grand a month, I don't know if I'd like at some point I'd want to have to, to enjoy it. I want to go do stuff like I don't want to run a course. The one thing. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Like, that's sort of one thing that I also look at um, is that what what value asset value can you put on a course? In my opinion, like I look at it that let's say for me with my e-commerce stores, I've got a software company. It actually I can assign an asset value to the company. So if someone come along, I could make a million dollars, you know, in, in that sale, let's say hypothetically. Um, I don't think courses generally have a value that you could buy them for. And um, so they're, they're very, uh, it can also be quite a risk because if your course dies out, you don't have any asset to sell. What you've just said there too with your real estate, you know, in two, three years, you could be making 50, 100K, whatever a month, hypothetically. But you've also then got all this asset behind you where you also potentially have millions of dollars of that too. Um, is that sort of how you're picturing it as well? As well, a little like, bit. It's more of, I've always been interested in running a real business. Yep. So I like the idea of structuring it and I've got outsourcing. Yep. I got people under me that manage rehabs. I got people going out and buying houses for me and running like a real business. Yep. And so that's what I'm more interested in. Now I, I could get to the end into, into consulting, you know, real estate. If you, if you run a successful real estate business, you can outsource a lot of it such that you don't have to be grinding 10 hours a day, but it's also going to, uh, I need to figure out what YouTube uh, what YouTube will bring me in the future too. If YouTube, if I can get to that Graham Stephan level, I mean, he, he's insane, but if I can start making 30, 40, 50 K a month from YouTube, then maybe I just become the YouTuber. And then I, I funnel YouTube into real estate and that's my thing. Yeah. So that's why I, I, I love the, I love to fantasize about the idea of running a consultancy where I, I create a course and then part of the consulting is offering a course in real estate. There's a very niche thing I do. It's called house hacking. It's basically where you buy a house, rent out the rooms and you live for free which is something I've done for the last few years and something I'm very good at. And so that would be my interest is a very hyper targeted niche, which I think I could be the best in the world at. And so, the, and there's value there. A lot of people leaving college, a lot of young men leaving college would, would be interested in that. So I know there's a market there, but how much time do I really want to be spending teaching beginners? I don't know. I don't well, know the answer. That's the thing. Like consulting can make really good money and you get a yes. but then you sacrifice time. You know, because it's, yes. it's obviously very correlated. And that's why we see a lot of these people because they know it works well. The the way they counteract it is that they get, what, 50, 100 students in all live. And, and as a result, no one really gets any individual value, do they? Right. Um, right. Because I've been asked to sort of do that too. And like when I've done mentoring, um, generally I just do it pure one-on-one -on -one because to me, I can't, I, I can't bring myself to teach five, 10, 20 people all in a single call because the, the, the individual value and lessons they're going to get drops dramatically. And I just don't think that's the right way of teaching, um, especially with the exorbitant fees that some, like some people charge with mentoring, especially in a group mentoring space. I think that's absolutely ludicrous in my opinion. Yeah, I could see um, doing a, a monthly fee where you do it for a year. I think for me, the, the key to, to build the best consulting would be the funnel and disqualification. Yep. And that is make it very clear. It's like, what I was even thinking is you do a course and you give the first half for free and just say, look, this is what you expect in the second half. The first half is good. The second half will, will be tinkering and, and optimizing your knowledge or, or whatever. And that way it's like, if you do the first half, you know exactly what you're getting in the second half. Please do not pay and join if you're just joining to be a part of a little group. Like you're, you're joining to do real estate deals yeah. And, and you probably do that the best you can. You make it very clear what's expected, what they're going to get out of it, what they can expect. And maybe that's the best way to filter such that you get you get five people a month, but those are the hungry five and they're going to apply everything you, you do. Maybe harder to know. find, but far more valuable. <laughs> there you go. Um, see, and um, you, you sort of touch on it too. And I do this very much too. I fantasize a lot about a lot of this that like I look at in, in our space with the e-commerce that um, Gymshark, for instance, again, a rare, very rare anomaly, but nonetheless, an amazing success story. And um, like I fantasize having my 
a company at that scale and that like what you said like to me I the money is something that's secondary to I want to build teams I want to build systems I love that's the fun yeah it is fun isn't it and you're learning yeah. you're improving you're always just moving forward a lot of um, a lot of other things to me it feels like you're going in a circle you're never getting anywhere whereas if when you're building a real business you just it's like building a house you're just literally building a house from the foundation up so it's been yeah um, uh, very fascinating and uh, I very much appreciate all your insight into this and I want to make clear to everyone that like I hope that you have found this very insightful again I'll have links for Spencer's channel down below I definitely recommend going subscribe to him he releases a video every two three days on average I'm at four, I'm at four days now four days I think it's actually a, a better release schedule my numbers okay. have been going up I think I think there is value with at some point dr decreasing the release yep. because then I, I think you mentioned it you click on the video I think when you get some type of audience it, they almost care less about what the video is about the less you release because hey i haven't i enjoy spencer's content and i've only watched one of his videos this week therefore i'm going to watch this one whereas if you release every day it's it sort of inadvertently because you build this audience and like as i said i'm a personal fan it builds up a bit of hype i can't wait for his next yeah. video and then just there bam, you go bam, bam. So, oh, by the way, by the way, one thing I want to touch on that we, we haven't talked about. So yeah. one thing that happened to me recently, Wesley Virgin sent me, his lawyer sent me a cease and desist oh. on his video. So this is something that happens. So we, we talked about what, what do you see in the next six to 12 months? Well, what's difficult is when you, when you come out and make videos and the videos that I made on him and Ariella Iorio, I, watched the them, video, yeah. I mean, were incredibly fair. I yeah, went back and watched them and I was like, this is this is just simply pointing out stuff he does. There yep. is no. I even say at the end of the video that I was. I think he runs successful businesses. I think he's a good guy. I hate the game and not the player. I I was dumbfounded when I went back and watched him and forgot about how fair I was. And I received cease and desist. And what's unfortunate is, sure, I make good money. But if you break it down by the single guru on their videos, I might make let's say. $800 a month or on the total $1,500 total, it doesn't make any sense to get a lawyer. So of course I'm going to fold. And so I have to take down the videos. It's unfortunate. So they, they can easily shut you down. And so that's why that's, it's really challenging to really go at them. That, that was actually something that I wanted to personally commend you for people like yourself, CoffeeZilla, uh, was it Tom Nash? Sorry. Tom uh, Nash. Yeah. Uh, yep. Um, all the people that are doing this more or less more than anything, because to you guys, it is quite a risk. You know, like you, got, um, you guys could be personally liable for defamation or whatever yes. it might come under. Um, and you've just sort of signified it there. And, you know, that's another thing. Like I personally watch this and I think the risk you guys are taking to try and raise that awareness and help people is something that really, in my opinion, is underappreciated. I personally wanted to thank you so much for that because I know that that might that would cause me sleepless nights because these fake gurus, their whole, as you said, business is based around, you know, they're selling courses. It's a shaky foundation, man. That's yeah. what it is. And when you yeah. when you go and you you go put, push the brick on the shaky foundation, they go, oh, I feel this, I feel yeah. it. No, no, we got to shut that guy down. No, it's cool, See, man. It's it's just part of the game, and I kind of laugh about it. Here's here's how I'm gonna win long term. I'm, I, this is gonna sound arrogant, but in some ways I kind of know the game, and I'm I'm playing three steps ahead of where they're at. Yep. And so I'll take the L today. But what they don't realize is, I do not like when this happens. I was done with them. I was very fair to them. Well, when you when you try and silence me. That is when you get the worst side of me. And so, <laughs> so congrats. You, you, shut down, you shut down my videos when I had 50,000 subscribers. When I have 500,000, I will end you. Yeah. And that's, that is their mistake. It is yeah. a very short term mistake. I'm always playing long term game. I, I watched that two part series and I found the, the webinar. Two, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I the webinar yeah. with the lady. I've forgotten her yeah. name. Yeah. Um, Ariella. That's her. Oh, she, Ariella. Yeah, they sent the the cease and desist. I found that incredible. Like, I there's part of the reason why you can probably see that I don't do these videos because I'm very biased and <laughs> um, and uh, and you know I, that's why I love your channel and that's why I recommend everyone to check out his channel. You take such an unbiased, you more break it down as to what it is rather than attacking the person. And so I find that quite worrying that they've given you this letter when it was more just you, you even say it in the videos. It's just general feedback yes. and. It was constructive um, criticism in a way. I mean, yes. sure, I, there was there in the first video there was uh, there were some jabs for sure, but I felt like there was no. I mean, I, all I use the thing is all I use is their material, 
So all I'm saying is over here, she says X, Y, Z. Over here, she says A, B, C. So what, it doesn't match up. Like, so if that's I may all I'm doing. ask, obviously, yeah. if you can't answer this, like, what was the reasoning for the cease and desist then? Like, if, it, if you're, you're not making up stuff, you're using what's readily- It's bullying accessible. tactics. It's bullying because they're just gonna get away. It's cheap to send a cease and desist. And then they threaten you that all legalese. And then I respond with, can you give me an exact example? And then he comes back with more legal talk about it's full. Your videos are full of defamation. They're full of this. You're wrong about her businesses. You're wrong about that. And it's, it's not scary in the sense that I'm over here. I don't have fear from these, these frauds, but yep. there is an element of fear in that I could lose my channel. That's the fear. I'm not fearful mm -hmm. of a lawyer or anything. The only thing I fear is if they try to play some slick game where they send a bunch of copyright strikes and mm -hmm. I lose my channel, that would kill me. And that's why I have to bend over it. It sucks in the moment. But again, I take L short term. I play the long term game at all times. They do not play the long term games. They're playing short term games with trying to ma maximize their income today. I will end them at some point because I know exactly how to do it. I'm going to buy their product and I'm going to title it an honest review. And there's nothing you can do when I buy the product and I just flat out come out and say, do not buy their products. This is exactly what they're doing. I'm going to keep the videos and go back and talk about it when I have 500,000 subs and the video that on that day will get more views than all the views combined that I'm getting today. Exactly. And, but it's like interesting you say that it's, it's such, that's what I mean by it's also a risk, not for you guys personally, liably in terms of legal, but again, like what you said, your YouTube channel brings you income and yeah, uh, it is my know, income now. It's a very fragile ecosystem, three copyright strikes and your channel is you're gone. And, um, you know, so it's a very fragile system. And so like, you know, you, you're very much, you're being very mature and uh, about it all. Like I wouldn't say you're being arrogant. I would entirely agree that, you know, cause I can see your channel getting half a million, million subscribers and I can't wait. I personally can't wait. I and, hope so. Um, you know, and it, to me, it just, it, it shows a reflection, a poor reflection on the people in my opinion. If you got, in my opinion, if you've got nothing really to hide, if someone gave me some critique, like people have said that I'm a scammer and stuff, I, I welcome it because if I have done wrong, it should be known. There's and a quote. There's a quote that has always stuck with me. How people respond to criticism tells you all you need to know. Yeah. I'm the same way. I welcome. I would love people to make. Well, no, I wouldn't love it. But if someone made a video about me <laughs> calling me a scammer or fraud, I'm yeah. cool because I want to see what their interpretation of my videos are. And I'll yeah. go. If they ask me, I'll go on and be like, Hey, I, I think you were actually wrong about this. I'm, I'm curious to hear why you thought that. But yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll face it. The people who can't face it are doing and especially the interesting thing is they went to a lawyer they didn't come on they didn't come on for an interview they didn't address it specifically they went to a lawyer that tells you all you need to know i yes. was right and they know it yeah instead of they didn't do they didn't do the youtube copyright because if they did the youtube copyright i could easily fight it right okay i didn't know that I would, myself with the youtube yeah. copyright part oh if, if i was wrong they would just immediately come out to me or, or, or copyright strike. They'd be like, you're yep. wrong. But they went to a lawyer because they're like, we need to shut this guy down legally because he's right. That makes sense. I remember like for me um, that I had a, um, cause as I said, I, used, I don't do it as much now, but like a mentoring case. And again, the definition of success is subjective, whatever that Very might be so. defined as. And I had someone that uh, I'm you know, not gonna name it, whatever, but like taught them, taught them the skills and they didn't apply it. And look, I can't control if you don't apply it, that's out of my control. I can't control that like anything in life, right? And they went and uh, attacked me on one of my, in my Facebook group. I, as I said, I, I don't hide to the fact, obviously a number of people were like, oh, what's Ricky done all of this and that. I just answered it um, in, from like an objective standpoint. I didn't delete the post. As a result, actually everyone turned on the person and I'm not trying to say that like, that's how it should have been. If, if I had done wrong, I would have just acknowledged it and that would have hurt me because I've done wrong. In I can't bring myself to um, to lie to people when we're talking that a lot of the people that are getting into these, you know, small businesses with five hundred, a thousand dollars, to them that's a lot of money. It right. is a lot of money. It might be all and, of it. All of yeah, that money. Exactly. Um, they, people get like we've seen like from yours and Coffeezilla's people getting loans out. Um, and I remember seeing that one on Or credit cards. Loans or credit cards. The one with the um and I hope I don't, if anyone here, like with that army individual who ended up taking his own life, I think it was yeah. on Coffeezilla's. And yes. Uh, yes. I thought that was so sad and I could not live with myself if I had, yeah, I just, I just can't bring myself to that. And there's so much more to life. As I said, money comes and goes, but 
you know, the experiences in life is what stays. Um, so in relation sort of um, to that, so you've already taken down those videos now, is that right? Is that my understanding? Three, three of the four I did. One of them I left up because I went and watched and I was so dumbfounded that they included that one. It, I did an ad critique of a popular ad on Wesley. Even was in that the, the video, one with the areas like walking past all the cars and the apartment yes. complex and that thing or whatever it is? Abs uh -huh. there, was, there was nothing in that video that was against him, defamation, slander. There was nothing even negative about him. All I was doing was talking about the psychological tricks he was using and not even not even in the sense of he's manipulating people. It's just, here's how he's selling. Frank Kern over here said that this would align with the FCC saying this is kind of an unethical way to sell. And I'm basically using other people going, here's what this guy said over here, applying it here and that's it. And I even said he runs successful businesses, but he never talked about it. It's like, I even complimented the guy. And so I'm leaving that one up. They can, and I, I'm probably gonna mess, with, I, this probably isn't smart. I'm probably gonna stay away, but a part of me wants to mess with this lawyer and e just email him every day. Just like, hey man, uh, can you see, are the videos down? Can you confirm they're still down? Just every day, well, just that harass well, them. I look at it personally as well. If they like lawyers aren't cheap, especially if you get a good one. Yeah. If they're willing to spend that much to get a lawyer to tell you to take down that one, it clearly shows that even you now you look at it that you've not got a huge audience, that your audience is large enough that it's clearly hurt their business. Yes. So as you said, like as, once you're at like 500,000 to a million, that will be the defining factor of if they have a business or not. Yeah, that's um, a goal too. I, I'm rooting on CoffeeZilla. I hope CoffeeZilla hits a million because a lot of there's a lot of carryover. People find my channel from his. Yeah, they do. So my, my goal for the next to answer that question fully, the six to 12 months, I really hope that our channels get large enough where the, these gurus wake up every morning and go, oh no, Spencer released a video. I hope it's not on me. That's the goal is and to so get to you, a point where if they don't come on my channel, I'm going to call them out and say, hey, I reached out to them. I, I was going to give him a chance to defend himself. But this over here, this is this ain't cool. Right. I gave him a chance to defend himself. He chose not to. That tells me all I need to know. And when you have a real, real following, real influence, that'll absolutely hurt their business. And yeah, then they'll be forced to respond. Do you um, follow Bola Busters a bit on Instagram? No, I'm not on Instagram. I tried to. I, You're doing I it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have an Instagram for uh, for research to check out all the lovely right. single women. You know, all my research. <laughs> and I, I I asked to follow them, but they probably rejected it because I'm a I have nothing on my profile. Ah, uh -huh. see, because um, I thought you may have found it interesting myself. I personally follow them, and you know, they're in a different space doing obviously very similar work to yourself and copyzilla i would say that they're they're doing more work that um there's a bit more biased and attacking the people whereas you and copyzilla try and you know take a more objective standpoint and like i see that a lot of people cop a lot of slack just from um the because ball of buses nearly has a hundred thousand followers and that's again another example and i recommend everyone if you don't know ball of busters on instagram you can check them out they've got i've heard it's uh, a good follow I well, heard they do a good job researching. It's very much like um, that the the young entrepreneurs stand in front of the sports cars, sell the dream the way it is, you know, and they're just revealing the actual facts. And I, I, I um, from my perspective, I think there's more than enough information out there on YouTube um, where, like, you know, you sh there should be a lot more red flags. Now, one thing that um, I wanted to sort of touch on, if um, do you think that with courses like how would you you said with podcasts and that let's say with e-commerce would you just say like you would just start uh again with networking and jumping on youtube watch some free courses because um and just learn and go from there is that sort of what you would do as that's a, a different space so I, I don't really know what someone yeah. should do i've never succeeded so i would be speaking out of ignorance but i'd imagine if it's anything like real estate i think the best path is maybe find people on linkedin i me personally i've i've had the ability to meet people in the e-com space. And I, to me, I just think becoming friends with people, that's how you get mentors. Yeah, sure. I'm sure there's plenty of options to, uh, to pay people and pay for mentorship. I get that. But for real estate specifically, I've found that going to networking events constantly, you get to know people, they become your friend, then it's easy mentorship. You get mentorship through osmosis. And so my question to you would be, how can someone do that in the e-com space? How can they find mentorship through osmosis where they can constantly be around people? Because it is a it is kind of an isolating job, right? If, if you're really good at e-com, you're probably working at your home or at an office. Like, I don't know 
if you have time to go to meetups, maybe you start a meetup if you want to learn. Start a meetup and go on LinkedIn and try to find people in that space. Not many people speak about LinkedIn and uh, as a whole, but it, you know, the real businesses, that's where LinkedIn like comes into its own play, doesn't it? Like, I love LinkedIn. I don't yeah. use it much personally though. I've got to be honest there. Um, but we'll look, we'll leave it at that anyway. I apologize for having gone sort of a bit over time. Um, but no, I want to again say like, thank you so much for taking the time. I believe it's quite late at night there. Um, yes, I'm about to go to the gym. It's oh, only 8.15. I go to bed at like midnight. The gyms are closed here, so I can't go to gym. Um, That's truly the worst thing that can happen in the world is to <laughs> shut down the gyms. America, uh, America is so fat now that like you can't close the gyms. We, ha we desperately need people to go exercise. But what's what's happening though, like um, part of the reason we're in lockdown is our government's really trying to, uh, you know, control the, the pandemic, get it to mm -hmm. much lower controllable levels before Christmas because everyone's going to go out, see family and stuff, and it'll just spread. What's happening over there with that? Like, it sounds like... I don't even know, man. I don't follow any of this stuff. Uh -huh. All I do is YouTube. I don't care. It's not... <laughs> yeah. This None of this stuff gets me any closer to my goals. Yeah. Yeah, I fair enough. I, I, I don't know if people... I, I don't really have an opinion on the virus or anything. I just... To me, I just... I'm healthy and young. I, I'm not scared of this at all, nor do I think anyone else is, truly, if you got people's real feelings. I mean, the second the government stops controlling people you see their behavior they all go out in groups without masks i'm just saying like people are telling us what they think and so i just i go to the gym i go to the grocery store i do youtube all day and that's all i do and i don't i don't let anything distract me where's the fitness videos man i'll watch them i used to make fitness videos that's a tough industry to crack <laughs> is it yeah well, it's, it's very it's kind of shifted now YouTube. yeah oh yeah it, it used to be there was a time for to make the the fitness videos but now it's so saturated and everyone's already made the how to get six packs or how to those types of videos i'm not i'm not that skilled i don't have the body the physique the personality to do it yeah yeah nor yeah, is it yeah. something i'm interested in but yeah i mean a lot of money to be made but as you said because it's just like i don't even know how many channels oh you could be. you could probably be successful at something else in life but that's not a good use of your time <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. you, you kind of figured out me it's real estate and youtube that's all i care about yeah that's fair enough well, look, I wanted to say again, thank you so much for taking the time um, for uh, coming on to uh, with this interview today. I very much appreciate it. As a personal fan, I truly am humbled and honored to have uh, just even spoken to you. Um, <laughs> I recommend Thanks, everyone. A, I recommend everyone. A uh, pleasure, like truly, like you, you're doing, in my opinion, God's work. Like I truly- It's so funny because like for five years, I made videos and didn't think I had the personality for YouTube. I was getting, I was like, I wasn't depressed, but I was like super sad that no one gave a shit about my channel. I think that everyone has, like, that's the thing about social media. Anyone can have the personality for like, you know, it's, it's more about like what you said, you know, you've been doing it for five years to get yeah. this, you know, and uh, that's something that is so, I didn't even know myself. I thought you'd been doing it like two to three no years january of 2015 so five and a half <laughs> yeah well look you know and see you know you're now seeing the fruits of that consistency and time and yeah. uh, you know that you should truly be proud of that like i, I, I genuinely i'm thankful dude i had a thousand subscribers yesterday alone one thousand subscribers wow, i was i was awesome. i woke up and looked at it and i was blown away trust I'm me dude, i remember the like, days where i had nothing i think i get on average like 30 to 40 a day and i'm like ah, i'm happy that's, with that's that. solid <laughs> yeah that's solid not um, many people get that but uh yeah yeah that's true exactly but i just wanted to say thank you so much for coming on today i hope you have a great time at jim as well i recommend please everyone check out his channel like he really is amazing he does i hope so you work. guys are you guys are paying for my sewage problem yeah pay for your sewage <laughs> problem like i would uh if you had a patreon um i would uh subscribe to that instantly so where's my patreon um oh man and uh so check out his stuff and um any of the others if you can also kind of just tell me about that some of the others you recommend like let's say coffeezilla or any others that i weren't aware of i'll link them down below as well because i think everyone here will find these channels very educational and very helpful to you in your journey um even if it's a tiny little thing i think you guys will find this to be something invaluable i personally it has helped me so many regards like with the research that yourself and coffeezilla and all that do it's open my or it's confirmed always my suspicions and um i think that that'll be one thing that everyone in this channel will find very valuable so once again uh thank you so much for uh taking the time today yeah man thanks for the kind words thanks for having me on and Pleasure. hopefully uh, half your audience comes and checks me out that'd be pretty dope yeah i look forward to it